Welcome once again to another episode of Legends of the Drowned Isles. This is the alt campaign known as the Great Confusion. And apparently there are fires somewhere. Uh, hopefully you're not hearing too much of the sirens in the background. It's just the alert we give to all the city when we start playing our game. It's just Medric and Dorm. <laughs> That's right. Medric would be the worst for fire uh, uh, detectors, smoke detectors. You, uh, I am Mark the Encaffeinated One. I'm the host and GM of this little game. Uh, and here are my players, starting on my left with Silas. Hi. Uh, my name is Pat, and I'm playing Silas Marsh, uh, warlock of uh, Mother Hydra. Hi, my name is Annie, and I am a rogue mastermind human thing. Among other things. <laughs> hey, I'm Nax, and I'm playing uh, Medrek, half-orc cleric, who just got a nice new fiery toy. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Follower of of Ignis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, a little recap here. Let's see how much I left out. It looks like I've got quite a bit written here, but let's see. After reconvening at the Three Bells, Annie came up with a plan to get Gaetano released, involving Medric's invoking of Ignis to prevent lies from being spoken in his presence. Before then, however, the three spent the day warning the people of Aelthvater to close up their doors and prepare using the apparently impending storm as a more palatable story for most. The story begins to spread, and the storm actually does start slowly moving in from the shore, or toward the shore. Far out in the water, a tiny but brilliant light could be seen just on the horizon below the clouds. After getting some skeptical reception from a few of the guards, the captain, however, is convinced to try Annie's plan. It works, and Gaetano decided to try and raise the warning in the town. Meanwhile, Captain Verandell, caught between the stinging embarrassment of one of the older, more experienced guards, known as Riemann, gave uh, that that he gave him for believing the story and the incontrovertible proof that Gaetano is in fact one of the seven top knights of the realm, decided he needed to report to the Baron and Baroness directly. And Annie, Medric, and Silas are to come along and present their case before the Baron. The visit with the Baron and the Baroness is odd and unsettling. Captain Verandell warns them to never speak to the Baron directly, and to be brief. He seems anxious about the meeting, and soon it becomes even more obvious why. The Baroness is hidden away behind obscuring veils of fabric, but her voice is imperious and unfeeling. The Baron, in contrast, is sitting stock still in his chair, rigidly cold and speaking in a stilted manner, almost seemingly reluctantly. Nonetheless, the case seems to be convincing, and a promise is given for a dozen of the guards who normally are on duty at the manor to be dispatched and join those on town duty. Afterwards, the captain admitted that, while not unexpected, the meeting still went oddly and seems unwilling to speak further about it. Returning back to the town, the group continued to spread the warning to the town, which seemed to be responding. Out in the bay, being tossed by the strong winds and lashed by the rain, they could see the errant widow making its way out to deeper water. The clouds grew darker and thicker and suddenly swelled upward, blocking the remains of the sun Night suddenly arrived, a few hours early, and the town was plunged into deep shadow. Near the docks, the tiny light had now grown into a brilliant lantern, and below it, the group could just make out the relatively tiny figure of the sea devil Oxia, riding atop a gigantic sea turtle. The battle has begun. And yes, as another side note, uh, Medric went to visit the flame keeper and was given a, a uh, Ignean relic to carry, uh, the uh, flaming shield of Ignis, which uh, at least the flame keeper believes will do you some help in what is to come. So, looking down upon the town, you can see this creature moving with alarming speed in towards the dock. It's moving not dissimilarly in speed to a, a ship itself but uh, not seemingly slowing down at all as it's closer to the dock. Okay, so this is a giant turtle thing? It is a giant turtle. Or it seems but, to be from the round shape and, and uh, generally turtle-like appearance. I mean, it's hard to tell from a few hundred feet away, but uh, with the bright light that's over top of it, you can just make out this sort of shadowy shape. 
So about what size are we talking about? Like 10 feet long, 50 feet long, 200 feet long? From here, uh, make a nature roll. I'm actually okay at nature. Given the way that the shadows move and the general uh, experience you have with sea turtles, um, this one is of a gigantic nature, probably 20 to 30 feet long, maybe 15 to 20 feet wide, uh, at least 12 to 15 feet tall. Tall enough that uh, it, it kind of dwarfs Oxia on its back. Okay. That's a big turtle. That's concerning. Yeah. It's fast on water, but it should be still on land. Some of you uh, see guards switch, uh, moving on by you, some of them heading towards the seawall. It appears that some at least have noticed this massive, um, this massive creature moving in. You, um, I'll we're... point out the uh, writer, like Oxia. I won't say her name because it's meaningless to the guards. That's it at this moment. It's like, shoot her down. Um, or focus on her anyway. They don't seem to pay much attention to you as you pass as they pass by, almost like they have no idea who you are. Right, but hopefully they'll remember that, like <laughs> when the battle starts officially. Hopefully they'll notice the big, ha uh, the big half orc armored cleric standing there, looking like he knows what he's doing. Yeah, <laughs> they seem to be distracted somewhat um, by the impending doom. Do we want to f run down to the docks and face this before it gets to the wall, or? Because if I might think that might be a good idea. Docks, yeah. Okay. Silas is going to start heading down to the docks. To give you some perspective, um, what I'm going to do is actually move to the map. Ooh. Where you get a chance to see a rough map of Aelthwater. Not exactly to scale. Um, and you get to I see the hope not. Speech. I don't think I'd fit inside any of those buildings. <laughs> <laughs> Well, those are the roads, not the buildings. Uh, well, I guess there are some buildings in blue down Even towards worse. the bottom. Oh, uh, that's how Elf Butter is spelled? Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I was writing with an E for the longest time. Don't worry. I thought it was like Elf, like E-L-F, E-L-F. There butter. are <laughs> many, many spellings of it because not everybody's all that literate. But that's <laughs> technically... Fair enough. Uh, now you kind of see shimmers a little bit at the very top almost as though it's sometimes partially obscured and sometimes not something moving around the light itself uh, I will have you each make a perception check as you come to the crest of where the wall is and then start making your way down towards the uh, towards the hey natural 20 Woo. hey not bad that's two 21s in a row too <laughs> All right. Uh, Medrick is having a pretty good uh, day in terms of seeing this. And 16 for Annie. And 16 for Annie. Okay. Um, okay, my scrolling has gone weird on my map here. I need to zoom in. Uh, the As you crest this, the top of this wall, um, a couple of things become apparent to you. One, for you, Medrick you know what the source of that light is. You know it is one of the star stones. You know it's one of the symbols of Ignis. So your attention is drawn to it like a magnet. And you can almost almost sense that kinship. Uh, maybe it's imagined, maybe not. Um, you'd experienced a little bit in the, in the tower. You didn't seem to notice as much when you were underwater. But now little small rays of light are, em are being emitted by this as something moves around it. Uh, partially obscuring it. You remember also that um, Silas had mentioned that something was kind of held around it, almost keeping it in check, and now seems to be in constant motion. Uh, you also make out that uh, there are, it's hard to see with all the buildings there, but there do seem to be other creatures which are, are climbing up onto the deck as the water starts to, or is actually fairly close to full tide at this point. Uh, and so the water itself li uh, laps at the top of the the uh, the decking, 
and you can see large, uh, strange creatures about um, twice as wide as a man, maybe maybe one and a half times as tall. As tall, they seem uh, crouched over um, and have uh, a little bit of a gleam as the water um, shines in the overhead light uh, on their what look to be uh, hard, smooth uh, uh, outsides, almost like you know, like small balls of armor. Uh, and as so they, one of them, they're not sea devils. Uh, they're not sea devils. And as you as you watch, you see one of them uh, put an enormous claw on the top surface of the decking and then haul itself up uh, to stand up on there, seeming some sort of uh, ally. For um, for uh, Silas, you are kind of looking at this scene, but trying to take everything in, and out of the corners of your eyes you start to notice things off to each side. Um, you notice, first of all, uh, Gaetano uh, is uh, running along the dock. He seems to have he's run ahead and had said he was going to collect people at the dock, but he's not running towards this main thing. He's running off towards the sort of northwest uh, along the dock and along the shoreline, seeming to run to the other direction. And as you kind of follow over to where he's running... Uh, you do spot uh, a, a figure moving somewhat stealthily in that direction. Um, I'm going to try to get to my uh, things there. Is that going to select them for me? Yes? Okay. Um, as you spot uh, moving somewhat stealthily, but with a couple more of these large creatures, um, you spot the four-armed uh, sea devil that have been with Oxia before. Uh, moving off and seemingly come up uh, out of the water off to the end of the docks, uh, heading up to where the edge of the seawall uh, 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 runs along the town. In the other direction, uh, it takes you a, a moment, it's almost a double take, as you look in towards the... Uh, let's see if I can get that zoomed out here. Uh, uh, look in uh, towards the edge of the water in the other direction. And the water itself seems to move with force and with some, uh, some, some will almost, uh, as you spot some of the water becoming more solid and uh, taking a form. I'm not sure if I got that right or not. Let's see here. Duke, duke, duke. There we go. Uh, as some sort of watery creature uh, seems to move out of the water. And, accom and accompanying it are some of the smaller sea devils you had seen before. And you spot that as all of this is going on. Okay, mm, dokie. Uh, what's the scale one here? The scale is approximate. It, you, I actually did set it so you can do measurements if you want to, but essentially every square, I believe, is uh, was it 300 feet, 200 feet. Okay, so those guys are like a mile away. Yeah, it's the, each each on they're both on the each edge of the city. Yeah. Yeah. So each okay. square is four hundred. I think that's what yeah. I said it to. Approximately. We're, we're gonna have to book it. <laughs> um I don't think Medric's hit points are right. It looks like he's lost most of his health bar. <laughs> you should probably reset those. Um I copied this from another map, so that's probably still set like that. Do I see the guard captain somewhere? Uh, you passed by the guard captain who is uh, dealing with some of their uh, their guards in the center. You can actually see them on the map here uh, right in the center. Varendel is were there with some of the guards, kind of looking at what's happening. The guards who ran down in front of you are, have kind of stopped at the edge just looking at this incredible creature which is now starting to crawl up and starting to not exactly try to crawl onto the deck, as it, the deck doesn't seem to be strong enough in most places, uh, but basically crumbling through the deck and moving slightly forward uh, with a few steps here and there. Oxy is still riding on top. And he's just running. Uh, Silas... Uh, is going to shout back to... I can't see their name because there's a guard standing on it. Uh, but the 
that's it, Verendel. Um, I'm going to yell back and see if I can get Verendel's attention. It is quite a distance back if you want to uh, to run back. You can shout. And... It'd take me all day to run back that far. <laughs> uh, I'll be shouting. Okay. What are you shouting? I'm... There we go. Uh, 17. Okay. You get the impression that uh, part of the message was clear. What is your message? Well... I'm going to. Uh... I'm, I'm mainly worried about like it's okay. Yeah, it's slower than we are. Yeah. How long does it take to summon that? With that, is it like a one action thing, or is it a regular summoning? I'm pretty sure it's one action. Just trying to find it. I'm trying to remember if I have that. On. Here we go. Do I have it on the description? I forget. It was just a character it's... sheet. Yeah, we don't yeah. have an item card. We just have the Zorn character sheet. Okay, I will look it up quickly. Okay. As you come closer, you'll notice a couple of things. Uh, there have been a couple of guards. One lone guard who was probably on patrol uh, is kind of st standing there in fright. Two of those large creatures you had noted before, uh, Medric, have made their way up on the dock. Uh, and the other guards, actually these guys lag behind a little bit, but they'll come in soon. Uh, and a couple of the other guards have made it ahead of you. They probably were heading down a lot earlier. So, why don't we... Unless you have any immediate actions you want to try to do before we get into combat. Because uh, you have no, to, there's um, a couple of minutes of travel here, so you have a moment to do something. Uh, just so we understand, this uh, this map is angled about 90 degrees from the previous one? That's right. Like it's coming left to right. That's right. Uh, now, okay. Uh, no, I don't think I've got anything else. Yeah, basically, this is a west-east map now, uh, with uh, west on the left, east on the right, or oriented in a normal fashion, if you will. All right, then we will start with. Uh, let's see. I need to bring up some character sheets. I wasn't sure how long or where you guys were going to be going, so I need a moment here. Uh, there they are. Nope, that's... Yeah, could I drop the Zorn Guardian now, or what, is that going to be an action, like, in combat? You could have done that before, if you if you were willing to basically take a couple of rounds for it to travel. It moves very slowly, though. Keep yeah. that in mind. <laughs> yeah, you might want to just drop it once we get into the middle of combat. Okay. That way it doesn't have to chase us. All right. Uh, why am I not seeing... I'm... Sorry, I'm having a moment of brain freeze where I <laughs> can't see what I'm seeing here. There they are. Um, I couldn't uh, couldn't find their character sheets for a moment, which felt really embarrassing. All right. Wait, how close do I have to be to the guardian, like to the stone, to summon it? Uh, you have to be basically touching the stone. Because okay. You have to speak the word into it. Because I was going to be like, what if I threw it at the turtle on its shell and like said the command word right before it landed? <laughs> that would have been nice. I mean, you could always um, try it. Could you activate it as you're letting it go? <laughs> you, you, honestly have not, you honestly have not tried this thing yet, so you're not really sure yeah. exactly what it will do. Did everybody hear me okay? Yep. I'm assuming everybody, I didn't actually hear everybody there. Okay. You're muted, uh, Medrick? Yeah. Hmm? Medrick is muted, I think. No, he's not. I'm not hearing him at all. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to hang up the call and see if that comes back. I'll hang up my part of it anyway. All right. I'm going to try this one thing first and then we'll
Okay, can I hear from Nax this time? Yes, hopefully. Ah, uh, yes, I can. Okay. I just awesome. reset all of these windows. Just a second here. No. So. Yeah, it's like Annie is town and the what? <laughs> can you hear me? Yes. Yep, um, I can hear you. Can, uh, can Annie say something? Just so I, I know she's muted at the moment, but... Hello. Okay, good. Looks like we're all here again. That is Yay. not the right window, clearly. Someday I'll be able to afford all the extra equipment that I want so that everything works perfectly and then pay someone else to deal with it. <laughs> there we go. All right. And let's see if we can get a view back for everybody. There we go. All right. Well, that was exciting. Not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now I got to figure out which window I'm looking at. Okay, here we go. These guys are pretty standard. So uh, the Do guards. We get the re -roll <laughs> no, all that seems okay. to have been saved. Uh, we're good to go. Uh, but all the guards get to go first. And let's just see how far. All right. We're actually going to be able to run up almost. Uh, this guy's... Well, at least he's swallowing his bravery, that's for sure. I think these guys are going to be able to do just move in. I think I moved them off the map by accident. <laughs> there we go. So, two of them will double move in. Actually, no, they're going to stay there, and they're going to go full defensive, because that makes a lot more sense for them. Okay, okay. A couple of quick attacks. Oh, actually hits. Good job. Um, okay. And everything's too far away. And oh yes, let's see if this this guard. This lone guard taking on this enormous creature. Now, as Medrick had seen them before, they do have this strange appearance. And now you can see them a lot more detailed. In our modern terms, or in the terms of fishermen, it would be the equivalent of a, a, of a man-sized crab with very thick uh, uh, chitinous armor that has a, a kind of strangely uh, light, almost light pink to, in some places, blue coloring on it that, that seems to shimmer uh, as the water falls down on, on it. And in its hands, or what would be hands, are these two enormous claws. And underneath its, what would be its face, it's recognizable in the sort of humanoid shape as a face, uh, are dangling a, a, a writhing collection of tentacles which seem to fold upward and reach out towards the guard as he comes closer. Uh, however, the guard... The guard hit. The guard's taking no shit. <laughs> These two guards have, have moved forward and have engaged, holding those at the moment right there. Uh, let's see. However, it is now those creatures' turn. No. Uh, let's see. This one. May they roll low. <laughs> um, this one kind of stalks forward towards them, uh, but does not actually uh, engage. This one. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, actually, we'll reach forward and try with the the uh, the strange tentacles to grab onto 
the uh, the hapless guard. Uh, let's see. Oh, did I not make that an attack? Huh. I normally can just click them when they happen. So, oh, there it did happen. Sorry, I missed it. Uh, boof. Yeah. Okay. He watches this guard who was brave enough to run forward and stab into the the uh, uh, creature with his. Essentially, it's it's uh, like a long spear. Uh, not quite able to keep it at guard, however, as it sort of lurches forward a little bit and grapples onto him, and you hear him cry out in pain as he's ripped in two. Damn. That was a one-shot. <laughs> yeah, those the, yeah, the guards are not happy for that. Uh, that's the two of them. Annie. You see with horror as one of the guards who was trying to move forward on this at this gigantic creature is torn apart. Is Annie muted? Annie is muted. But also well, all I said was oh. Um I don't know if I can heal that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go here. Okay. And how far is this guy? 30 feet. I can hit that with a bow, I believe. The bow? Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. My little dinky shirt bow. Okay. That's a natural 18 plus 5, so 23. That's definitely a hit. And I believe the guards are allies, so I get sneak attack. Yep. There's only one guard close enough, but he is keeping him engaged. Poking at him. Cool. His tiny little spear. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> that's bad. 12 piercing damage total. Ooh. The arrow flies right over the guard's shoulder, embedding itself deep within the creature's flesh. It, it hits him solidly in the shoulder, and it lets out a, a inhuman, animalistic cry of rage and pain. It stands still, but and it's, it's wavering. Sorry? And it's also within 30 feet of me, so I would like to give advantage to the next attack on it by like trying to get its attention with that. I think you got its attention. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, that's your move, action, and bonus. Uh, Oxia's turn. Uh, Oxia simply uh, looking down upon the scene seems to see uh, see some engagement, but also kind of perhaps uh, some satisfaction at that at that guard's demise. Uh, just simply instructs the creature to move forward, and let's see if we can do that. Uh, actually, Duke, and then, uh, as it moves, not so much, um, on the dock, so much as kind of through it, um, we'll consider this to be, um, let's see if I can do this properly, um, difficult terrain, I think is a good way to describe basically this area that it went through. Silas, this thing seems unstoppable, but you can see uh, from there, especially Oxia holding uh, a hand out and above it hovers this this uh, orb of blackness, this sort of shimmering, shape-shifting, changing uh, orb of blackness you'd seen before in the cave. And as it spins and surrounds, you can see little sparks of the light moving free. You're muted. Yep. Um, when I saw the orb before, I remember we talked about its size, but I can't remember what we said. How big was the orb when it was exposed? Um, it was about the size, I'd say, of a basketball, probably. It's hard to okay. say because if you look directly at it, it's almost too bright, like looking at a sun. Okay. So no, uh, no picking it up with a mage hand. Probably not. 
Uh, is she holding it or? Um, she's holding her hand out and it seems to be hovering above her hand. Okay. Uh, yeah. It seems to be the creature or the thing or the f whatever it is, which is actually um, itself mm -hmm. kind of suspending okay. the, the thing. Well. Uh. It doesn't look at all snaky, does it? The sorry, the the big turtle. The turtle does uh, not. No. Well, mm, crap. I am going to hope that it still thinks like an animal. And I am going to use uh, Misty Visions, which I call Mirage, to uh, make a, uh, a big fire appear in, like, right in front of it. Uh, like right just a couple of feet, uh, feet away. Kind of hovering over the water? Yep. Um, yeah, like just a big fire. I think I can do like 15 feet across. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's going to be like a wall of fire. I just, just want to see if it shies back from it. Okay. Uh, what is it to see through your illusion? There should be a, uh, yeah, it's my standard spell save, which is a 13. And what kind of save, or what kind of, um, yeah, what kind of save is it? Uh, usually it's an intelligence save to see through illusions. Okay. There's usually... no specific one per spell. It's just either you touch it or something, or it could be a perception roll if it touches it, or if it knows to think of heat. Okay. Because there's no heat and there's no sound. It's just visual. And which one is this, sorry? Minor uh, it's silent image is the spell. Oh, okay. All right. Well, let's put this on the map as a square of fire. It's, uh, say, 15 feet or so, so something like that. Yeah. That works fine. Okay. Uh, it won't do anything yet, but we'll see what yep. it uh, considers. And other than that, I am just... Uh, oh, it's an investigation check. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I am going to move... Okay, it says 30.1 feet. I can't change it to anything other than something 0. 0.1. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, we'll round so... down. I'm not sure why the map is, in a, is not quite accurate that way, but... It might be a no, no, it couldn't be. Anyways, uh, I just move over, uh, or move down the the beach. Okay, you step off the side of the the, the area. There, you are in in uh, some water there, as the water is moving up quickly. But yeah. Oh, and I left Gabriel with uh, Nikki and the family at home. Gideon. I did not bring him to combat. Gideon, Gideon you mean? Gideon, sorry. <laughs> you also and left the, Gabriel and Gadfly yeah. and Gladriel well, and all of them back. Yeah. The menagerie. All right, that's Silas's turn. Uh, let's see, these guys now. Uh, this one is emboldened, so he'll move forward and get ready to fight. Uh, this one is not happy with having two of them attack, so we'll in turn... Uh, let's see. Sorry. That's right. I think with one of its attacks, it's actually going to pull the stupid arrow out of its shoulder um, with some d uh, dismay and then uh, charge forward, or rather charge its head forward at the nearest one. But sort of watching Annie as it does so, you kind of get this impression of, of I'm going to do this to you next, but first this thing. Uh, let's see how well it does. Uh, unfortunately, Evidently. yeah. 
Sorry? As it does that, can I, like, start staring at it, pull my other arrow out? Absolutely. <laughs> as, Slowly. As, as maybe because you drew the arrow forth or maybe because of the pain, uh, it lunges forward trying to bite at the guard, but unfortunately uh, uh, the guard is, is kind of understands what's going on. This is something that you've kind of noticed in, in well-trained guards is that they know how to work together. And you get the impression that he's he's aware that the arrow came. He knows he's got back up back there. And so he kind of knows how to keep the spear between uh, between the toothy maw and himself and manages to hold it off. Uh, it's going to stay right where it is. Medric. Oh, wait. Why do we have zero for Medric? You didn't have zero, did you? Because it, it locked up as soon as you tried to oh. put it in. He had a two. Anyway, so I'm oh. in the right spot. That's, that's, all right. That worked out. <laughs> Okay, just let me. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Take my my full movement and drop the Zorn Guardian orb, and say the command word. That's gonna be my action. All right. Do you have a uh, a particular word in mind? Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's kind of a battle word. I, I think we can accept that, uh, sort of. Let's see if I have him here. I think under characters, yes. So yeah. the creature appears at your feet. Um, kind of, you you speak to the stone, and sort of a few uh, pebbles of dust kind of float out from the stone, and nothing happens at first until the pebbles kind of multiply in in place pulling energy and pulling matter from some other plane of existence until uh you know the, the it lands with a thud on the deck heavy heavy thud and then crunk 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 crunk, crunk one arm kind of pops out crunk, crunk a leg pops out and this short squat creature sits before you um let's just see if you can do that and i will give you a, a control over him and he will roll his own initiative. Uh, with that and that. And. Hopefully. Do you I'll want me to roll initiative for it? Uh, can you. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully you can do that. Can you bring up his character sheet, is the question. Uh, yeah, I can. It's not a normal looking character sheet, but. No, it's an NPC character if you... sheet. More normal. There, that should look a bit more normal. If you click the little uh, gear, it, it hides all the the work. And it has uh, a little initiative button there, too. Oh, okay. Nice. So hopefully all of you can access it is, that. It's <laughs> way tougher it. than we are. <laughs> uh, He's a tough little guy, that's for sure. Yeah, well, that's what we need. But uh, slow as molasses. It's very, very yeah. slow. All right. Did you roll initiative for him? I'm trying to find it. <laughs> Character sheet. Here we go. Maybe. Initiative. Where is it? Uh, it's Any windows. It's to the right of armor class, right up at the top. Yeah, there's a little uh, little thing that says in it. There's a little die. Pretty much right in the middle of the. Oh, of the, uh... Yep. All right. That's complicated. Right. There he goes. Oh, About as good. As wow. All right. So I'll add him in as eighteen point one. Yeah, it'll actually go next. Uh... And as a bonus action, I'll take out my shield. I won't like light it on fire yet, but. Okay, and you now have your bone, your shield out, and yes, as soon as coming into being, it sort of looks up, and it has sort of a jagged mouth, but doesn't seem to speak all that much. It has two uh, dark stones, which are apparently its eyes, and creepily kind of move in the stone itself, kind of rolling around, uh, and looks up at uh, you, Medric, and seems to be looking for something to do. All right, well, it's going to go towards the guy that toward the garden too, I guess. Wait. How do I... 
now. What's up? How do I do the arrow thing where I uh, see the distance? Start moving it and hit Q. So you, you so pick you... up the token and then Q while you, once you have it picked up, and then it should happen. Okay. okay. There you go. It's so weird without a mouse. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. And he will hold an action, which is like, hit the thing if it comes near. Okay. So specifically aiming at the large creature that's there. Yeah. The, the This one. Yeah. Okay. So is that as far as he can get from there? He can actually... Oh, wait. He's only going to move into 20. Never mind. Yeah. yeah. Yep. There's low. Is his burrowing movement supposed to be two feet? Uh, no, it should be... It should be 20 feet. That was a tight Okay. Can he really burrow, like, on the docks, though? <laughs> no, I just wanted to check that before okay. we do anything else with it. I thought you meant, like, two feet under the ground. It's like, what? Uh, I, I guess that's, like, a different angle of measurement. But... Yeah. Instant fix. Ta-da. There, now he has a burrowing of 20 feet. Uh, yes, and he, and he moves forward and holds that action. Was there something? Just winds adding? up like, I dare you to come closer, motherfucker. All right. Also, now we have to keep in mind that during like regular like bar casual conversations, nobody can say the word motherfucker while touching the stone. <laughs> <laughs> or do you have to touch the stone, or do you, do you just have to say the word? Uh, well, it's it's having the stone and speaking the word towards it, which may or may not happen uh, in a bar. If you're <laughs> oh, holding stone out. You don't know. You haven't tried it. Oops. Uh, you were given the option of choosing what? your own word, and that's what you said. So. <laughs> Thankfully, it wasn't the word "the" or something like that. Yeah. Uh, let's see. The two guards there, now confident with their uh, backup, are moving in and closing Person. in on those. And one of them... Uh, let's see, the, the topmost one will try to roll. He gets advantage because of the the support of the arrow master behind. And if I get that in the right window, uh, pretty good start. And he gets a natural 20. So he lurches forward. Oh, actually, he lurches forward, uh, kind of timing it for when the creature seems to have its attention focused on the the uh, person with the bow in the back. The other one has managed to kind of hold him off and keep him in position, and he lurches forward with the spear and stabs through him as the creature goes down. And it writhes, and he kind of, maybe a little overzealously, he kind of shouted as he, as he dove forward against the loudness of the wind and the rain and then drives the spear into it, into the deck, pinning it down, and then it writhes in pain and dies. Uh, the other guy, uh, Avatar gets a chance to make no. an attack. What's with all okay. these motherfucking earth elementals on my motherfucking dock? <laughs> this is definitely the bluest episode I think we've done so far. Uh, however, he does get a chance to attack. Is the attack on his character sheet? Uh, yes. Right, he gets multiple attacks. Okay. Uh, no, he only gets one attack because he's going to hold one attack at a time. Right, gotcha. Do I pick claw or bite, or is it the same? It's up to, up it's to up you. To you. Yeah, think. whichever one he would have held. All right. Well, one is 1d6, and the other one's 3d6, so can I just pick the 3d6 one? <laughs> uh, creatures uh, at disadvantage. Actually, sorry. It'll pick the one that was closer first. Um, wow. Uh, oh yeah, this should be rolling at disadvantage, but doesn't really want to roll much, roll much lower than that. Uh, amazingly, the guard who is on on uh, on guard is kind of waving his spear back and forth, and the creature seems to be kind of swinging forward, trying to hit the spear and missing uh, on the second attack. Well, your team has advantage, disadvantage set already. It's eight and one. Oh, there you're right. One and then. You're right, indeed. So the second one was also yep. a miss at nine. I was kind of I'm yep. used to the way it shows it for PCs. I didn't realize for NPCs how they showed it. Uh, yeah. So the third one doesn't matter. Well, the the uh, the, the yep. 
<laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. Okay. I just said yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, modern telecommunications. It is such a pain in the ass. Uh, as the creature kind of bears down and, the, and the, the guy's desperately moving his spear around and it seems like he's almost leading its gaze with the spear, flexing it every once in a while. It, 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 uh, a little bit of light glints off it, the, the wet point of it and this rain kind of uh, keeping it there. And this guard, if he survives, is going to have a great story to tell. However, there's a long way between here and there. Annie, you're up. I have an arrow mm -hmm. in my bow. Uh, how far? Oh, yeah. Uh, I will shoot said bow. Let's use this die. Uh, probably not with a 13. Unfortunately, a 13 kind of bounces off. It's, it's, it, you look, you think you've lined up that spot, which is unarmored on the head, and it kind of ends up glancing off the forehead plate. Turn off into the, into the dot, the night. Cool. Um, and I will do, uh, I'll tell the guards that the Zorn is with us and, uh, or that the gravel thing is with us. And yeah, hopefully that can help them give advantage to hit that one. Okay. Do you want to move it all? Um, how far am I from it? Um, you know what? Uh, I'm gonna move here, I think. Because that puts me, uh, actually here. Yeah. Kind of want to stay away from, from this thing. Okay. That is that is that. Okay. Uh, now, Oxia on board her creature. Let's see. Hmm. You see her raise her other hand and kind of cup it uh, underneath her mouth. Not entirely un dissimilar in some ways to the way that, uh, that Silas had produced this tremendous burst of sound before. Uh, she called out. Uh, I don't think any of you uh, understand, well, you probably don't understand sea devil language anyway, um, but it is some sort of language, not just a, a cry or a call, and it seems to echo across the the uh, the ground uh, to some other distant place, but does not move. Uh, it seems like they're content to stay where they are for the moment, but it was definitely a signal of some kind. Silas. Are you muted? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't said anything yet. <laughs> um, yeah. They are 40 feet away. Oh, the I should say, uh, because I forgot the, the creature also moves at the same time. The creature itself has not moved forward, uh, and actually, sorry, I didn't even think it, have it make a roll. Which creature? The uh, dark thingamajig? The large turtle. Okay. Uh, however, I'm not expecting this roll to go all that well. Uh, oh, wow, what is the DC on the illusion? 13. It seems to, to look at it and start at first, but not giving any command to go forward, it seems to disregard it. You almost get the impression that there's a, a deeper intelligence behind the creature that uh, seems to look through the illusion, almost trying to spot you. Maybe it's because it's been around creatures like Oxia with all the magic they have or who knows what. It seems to be able to pierce the illusion. Hmm. That, by the way, was at a minus four. I did not expect it to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's fine. Um, well, I am going to... Uh, I'm going to try and cast Frostbite on 
the black gooey creature that is surrounding the orb. Okay. Because I know it's a separate thing. It's the one sheet I didn't bring up. Okay. Uh, all it's ones. a constitution save. Constitution save. All right. Do, 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 do. Dun, 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 dun. The button, I suppose. Hey, if it succeeds, it'll do one damage. <laughs> Ouch. Okay. It hasn't. It hasn't succeeded yet. So. Okay. Um, as you fire off this this cold snap, uh, it seems to strike true. Uh, and the the effect of it, in, however, seems to almost follow its twisting and wild pattern around. Uh, as you see the effect kind of uh, move in. What is the damage? It's cold? It's one point, but it succeeded, so it takes nothing. Okay. Uh, it seems to take it in stride. Yep. Um, then, yeah, I'm going to... Hoof it down to here, so I'm close enough to support the guys at the south if needed. Okay. And that's it for my turn. Uh, the one remaining Sea Devil dislocation moves forward into the fight. The one who was so, uh, perhaps, a little bit too uh, self-important, the, the guard who would have had a great story having held off this enormous creature for a second, now finds himself uh, on the receiving end of... Uh, a uh, pair of claws as they slash forward. Oh my god, did they miss? Hey. They missed. So now kind of sweeping this, this spear back and forth, he's keeping all of this at bay, distance around him, keeping it clear. This story's getting better and better. Ooh. But then he is hit. Not dead. But for him... That's a pretty significant hit. Uh, as you see, the second claw kind of uh, sweep in just as the, the maybe the, the, uh, the confidence has grown too strong. The spear swings back to the other creature to hold it, and then the claw comes sliding up his, his side. Um, from where you are, you also see the sort of almost burst of green that's infesting the wound even as it moves. Uh, and that is that creature's turn. Medric. Right. Mm -hmm. and again, the wind's kind of blowing around you. You almost get the impression that the storm is almost centered at this point. Because this guy's pretty scary, and... Definitely so hulking almost he's not that much taller than you but you get the impression that's because his body's almost doubled over in this sort of c shape that's the letter c not the water c but that's both words <laughs> so. and how do i do this with a character sheet again i like how i just forget how to play like from one <laughs> week to the next that's it no okay On a regular character sheet, you should be able to click. Well, actually, I don't know how you're set up. <laughs> Let me see if I can bring it up here. I'm just going to use the dice roller. Uh... Yeah, Efficiency so... bonus plus strength to hit, right? Uh, yep. All right. And or hammer one. Hit. Really? I your, miss. Um, <laughs> just for future reference, um, in the center yeah. part of your sheet where the damage where the weapons are listed, you can just mm -hmm. click on the word Warhammer and it should roll it for you. So if I click on it, you thing, have advantage. I do. Um, you do have advantage. Yes, so you can roll one more time. Right, Warhammer again, which is mm. um, well, <laughs> no, you can't keep rolling until you succeed. Sorry. Uh, I only rolled it once. I tried to like because I'm using a touchpad, so I might have just like touched too late. Like... You might have hit it twice. Unfortunately, the ten uh, does not hit. As you come swinging with the war hammer, and it kind of goes clunk on the on the side of this creature, and it barely seems to notice. 
engaged as it is with three with three other people. Um, but as a bonus action, I will cast spiritual weapon right behind it. Okay. I got a spiritual weapon. Where are we here? Uh, did, uh, spell effects. Here we go. Spiritual. Wait, where did I put that? Oh man. There we are. Here's your spiritual weapon. There it is. And does it make an attack right away with the spiritual weapon? Yeah. I'm pretty sure it can. Yes. Okay. Just let me take the uh, Ignis is clear of disapproval damage. The 16 to hit. 16 to hit. That's looking good. Let me see here. 16 is... It hits. Woo! As the swirling theory uh, Warhammer appears and it comes crashing down on the back of this thing's head. And the damage is... I forget if I add my modifier. Remember right. advantage. What? Or, or did you uh, remember advantage? No, that's All right. only it's, for it's, the first it's... strike. Because uh, it's not. Uh, cause, is it? Oh yeah. Never mind. Never mind. Four. Oh, nice. Max damage. Oh, nice. So ten total. Yes, it comes crashing down upon the back of its head, and it looks quite uh, shaken nice. by this. Actually, uh, as it thought it successfully blocked a weak attack from the front, and then clong in the back. And it kind of wavers. We get that with practice swing, clearly. <laughs> you were just setting up yourself, that's all. Yeah. Speaking of yourself, it is time for Graveler. Graveler takes a swing for his first attack. Where is. I need a new desk and like enough space so I can use a mouse, and this would not take so long. <laughs> we have a wish list involved. Oh, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, the 13 does not hit, as again, bounces off its tough hide. Then it'll bite him. Oof, that hits. Is that a uh, three not... claw attacks? But... Hmm? I believe he gets three claw attacks, one for each arm, and then a bite. Oh, yep. Three okay. claws, one bite. He's a scary creature. Yeah, he is, like... <laughs> I'm a bit surprised we're allowed to have this. <laughs> Mother I remember, I, well, I remember see... almost that. Uh, you see the opposition I'm throwing you against, so you know, I may have had this. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, the bite, uh, he, he lurches forward, and this jaw kind of emerges out of the body. It's weird because uh, there's no separate sort of head. It's all part of one thing. But it sort of grows and grumbles, and there's a crashing of, of, of a, like sound like an avalanche crashing down on a, on the creature's extended limb, uh, which does a nasty amount of damage. Uh, and then while it's got it there, it kind of does an uppercut, punches it in the face. <laughs> exactly, uh, for another additional amount of damage. But the third one, by this point, it's kind of shaken itself free of this uh, of 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 graveler and uh, and starting to to reassess its position. Wow, that was a good round. Okay. <laughs> it's time for the guards. Uh, so uh, this one will move in uh, a little closer. Whoops, not quite that close. So three guards making a chair, two guards uh, making their way against this large creature. The first one striking, oh, and hitting. Good job. You got it surrounded now. It's doomed. Second one, making a similar strike. Jeez. Woo! I, it is now kind of all these different bits and pieces coming together, kind of pinning it in place. It's now being pounded on from multiple directions. In the other end, um, the one who was defending is going to continue to defend because it seems to be working for him. Uh, meanwhile, the partner beside is going to try to make an attempt at this big creature and see if it can make any headway. And... Another successful hit. These guards are doing great. Everything's fine, guys. The guards have it. 
<laughs> All right, let's just go have some ale. Come on, Graveler. <laughs> As once again, the one down below is, is kind of whipping the spear back and forth to keep everything at bay. He's still pretty badly wounded, but he's, he's hoping he'll be able to survive this. Uh, and his friend taking advantage of the moment to stab inward. Uh, now their turns. Let's see, the big guy. Big guy probably not happy with uh, Graveler. So he's going to take at Graveler. Let's see. Uh, yeah, he's he's decided you think that uh, Graveler is probably not a great meal. The uh, the remains of the previous guard still kind of dripping off of its tentacles. And you see them kind of twitch for a moment. And then, uh, and then just it reaches out to smash into uh, Graveler. Uh, Graveler. Does a 12 hit? Nope. No. How about a 15? Wow. Nope. You're doing terrible. As it tries Graveler. a couple of heavy swings. <laughs> Meanwhile, the other one uh, is going to try to reach forward and grab. Uh, grab at the one that stabbed him. So that one will make a save. Whether it's uh, da, da, da. Uh, that from it. Oh, wow. These guys are doing great. Yeah. As it tries to grapple onto the guard that's there and the guard kind of unable uh, to swing the spear just enough to keep the tentacles from, from uh, moving around. Jeez. Okay. All right. Well, that's, uh, that's theirs, guys. Uh, Annie. Hello. Um, well, I'm content over here, so I'm going to throw another arrow at his way using my bow. I'm not just going to eat it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but a, uh, does a 14 hit? A 14 does not. It's again, it kind of, it's spinning around and kind of backhands the arrow accidentally. Yup. Um, well, uh, I will try to, to tell them like, well, don't, don't hit, hit under its arm guys. Like, <laughs> you got this. The weak spot's right there. I'm pointing at it. Can you? Yeah, pointing right at it. What? <laughs> <laughs> On board the mighty beast, Oxia uh, makes a gesture now. One hand still open underneath this creature or an entity or spell that she's cast to hold this beam in. The other one starting to weave some sort of arcane symbols in the air. And you can see yeah, little one. little sharp spikes of light uh, pushing outward now from the center point as the creature starts to twist and turn and start to focus these, these little bits of pieces of light. One of them, the first time it manages to get focused, uh, shoots outward and strikes the seawall. And you can see a bit of uh, steam from all the rain that comes in contact with this beam as it comes out, steaming up, uh, as well as when it hits the wall, there's a, uh, a bright spot as the stone itself is being heated. And let's see, the creature is... Uh, did you Do you have to drop that silent image, or is it actually just staying there? You're, uh, you're muted. Drop it for what? Uh, the the silent image is there. You're pretty sure the creature is not affected by it. Are, is it is it there? Is it concentration, or did you drop it? Uh, I haven't dropped it. No, I still okay. have it up. Okay. It is concentration. Okay. I believe, Just wanted to check. But, uh, um, so the creature does not uh, does not seem to be, to be concerned with it, but also doesn't seem to have been given a command to move forward. Silas, you can see the change in what's happening there. Oxia seems to be moving forward with her plan. Okay. Well, it's time to move forward with my plan. Uh, let's see. Whoa, base rumble. It's a storm. I mean, totally <laughs> in-game. <laughs> sure. That was exactly planned. Like everything we've done today, completely planned. Oh, no. Why is it not doing the Q thing? Come on. 
You have to pick it up and start moving and then there hit we go. Q. Yep, it just wasn't doing it. Ah. So that's 10 feet to there. Uh, 30 feet. Oh, that's going to put them there. Uh, yeah. How how high up is the dock above the water? Uh, well, at at the point at which the creature is, the dock and, and water are pretty much even level. Um, even here, um, the water started to creep up, so there's only a couple of feet. Okay. Well, let's see. And weird Silas. We'll move 25 feet to there. Then he wants to jump across to the section right beside the sea devil. So right jumping there. Out. Okay. All right. That's he's a... not an athlete, but he's going to try. Uh, <laughs> athletic, athletics or acrobatics? Is he going to be bouncing across or just running and jumping? Well, his acrobatics is one point higher. So, uh, and in that it is not a zero. <laughs> There is a specific thing for jumping, but I'm just going to let the roll stand. Yep, you managed to hop over. Uh, it's a little bit uh, uh, uneven uh, as, as far as your landing goes, but you managed to land kind of beside, uh, in between the creature and the other creature with the large. Uh, yeah, his long jump distance is nine feet, so he should have enough to cover it. Uh, but yes, uh, and that start, that also eats into his second movement because he needed. He's not doing anything but moving. Okay. Uh, so he's got... Uh, what is his movement? 30 feet, I think. Yes. As you hop so over, you... you do notice that the guard you passed right beside has a pretty nasty gash along his side. And while he's putting on a brave face, he's not looking great. He probably should get to a healer then. Uh, <laughs> I've got nothing I can actually do for him. Um. And then I want to climb up on the turtle. Okay. Uh, that is going to be another athletics or acrobatics role, as the turtle is not exactly sitting entirely still. That it is doesn't really uh, have handholds. It's kind of slimy. Let's see. Oh, okay. Fifteen. As you kind of look at the thing as it looms over top of you, uh, and you caught. I, I guess draw down in that wealth of, of strength, maybe even uh, an inner an inner call out to uh, Mother Hydra to to give you the things you need, and you grip onto the the slimy uh, leg of this thing and start climbing your way up on. Uh, it is essentially difficult terrain to get up there, so yeah, uh, that's what I figured. So he can go about ten more feet. So you'll you'll basically just get onto the edge of the thing. Yeah, uh, well, no, I mean, he's got 25 feet of movement left, but that halved that would only get him to, oh, okay. like, five feet to climb, and then he can move, like, ten more well, feet. Well, it's, it's ten feet to the top. Okay, yeah, uh, ten feet will basically put him at the edge anyways. Uh, yeah, he'll be right there. Uh, and hunker down a bit, hoping Oxia does not yet see him. Well, why don't we find out? How about you make a stealth roll? And Oxia will make a, a roll to check. Uh, yeah, she sees you. Just say, like, hey, Oxia, I'm here to join the battle on your side. Hey, beat a 12. <laughs> no. Hey. I refuse. As she seems <laughs> to be entirely <laughs> focusing. She's, destroying. she's focusing on the thing that she's doing uh, and does not seem to notice you crawling up on the other side. Maybe this time the storm is working in your favor. You're not sure. All right. Now, for the one remaining of the Sea Devils at this fight, uh, he will uh, make another attempt at uh, this this cocky guard. He's not very been doing very well with it so far. Uh, let's see. I think he's going to lead in with a bite this time. Oh, wow. <laughs> that, that spear keeps whipping around, and, and this time almost backhands him as he tries to lean in with it. Uh, and once again with the claws... Oh wow! Natural Holy one. moly! Uh, yeah, <laughs> this guy is for fighting for all of his all of his worth right now. The the spear is practically almost breaking in two as he whips it back and forth, 
uh, and the from the, the the chin of the creature back to its claw knocking it out of the way. Yeah, I'm gonna have to name this guy. Uh, what's the effect of the yeah, natural one? Send it to D20 to dice jail. <laughs> like if I can swear. Uh, I'm gonna say it's going to. Uh, hmm. Let's see. I'm gonna say he's the the guy's gonna do damage. The actual spear point's gonna hit him. Sure. That's yeah, good. totally meant to do that. Let's see what he can do. All right. Yeah. That's, that's three points and three points for for a backhanded slash. That's pretty good. Uh, and it kind of leaves the the uh, the sea devil kind of. It's that that martial arts moment when someone goes whoop 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 and he gets like, uh, what just happened? Because he goes in for the the bite and gets a spear point in the in the uh, snot, in the nose. Uh, Medric, this yep. is all taking place on the opposite side. You see none of it, but it's really cool. Yep. <laughs> I hear sounds of battle. It's pretty great. Yeah, battle is awesome. Overhead, you do see some flashes of light as, and you can sense now the energy of Ignis sort of being released in smaller uh, pieces and that beam kind of called to you much like you remembered it before. But now it's being it feels, used in an improper manner by an improper creature. It's being corrupted. Yeah. Motherfucker. Not, not the guardian, just motherfucker <laughs> for the sake of saying motherfucker. <laughs> Three. I'll climb the turtle as well. All right. That will be an Don't athletics or acrobatics. Yeah. Oh, definitely athletics. <laughs> Lag. Okay. <laughs> All right. You two are able to find a, 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 a handhold on this this uh, soft and slimy creature. It's so big, though, that you're not even sure if it would you would notice it. No more than a, a spider crawling over your own arm. Now it is. So it is. It is ten feet up. Which is difficult, difficult terrain still, so that's 20 feet of movement to get all the way up to the... To the oh, uh, crap. Okay, so I can only get up five feet. Get, get back there. So you uh, kind of climbing on the edge? Yeah. Okay. Am, I, am I next to Oxia? Well, where did you want to be? You could be anywhere along there. I will move... Yeah, uh, next to Oxia is good, or... Okay. I'll move this creature out of the way just so you can see it. All right, so you're basically right there. We'll say you're on the edge, um, just below her. Okay. Then I'll take a swing at her. Uh, well, you're hanging on to the edge, so what do you have to swing without hands? Can I hang with one hand? Sure. We make it with a disadvantage. Make the attack with disadvantage. Okay. Hey. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Uh, as you kind of hold on, you, you grip really, really tightly onto You find a couple of loose scales of its hide and just kind of bury your fingers underneath using your whole body momentum, swing up with the, the hammer and catch her on the leg. Uh, surprising it says, her. Uh, rolling for damage, it says zero plus three. It that doesn't really work, does it? Uh, you're muted, Pat, but I think I understand what you're saying. Uh, you rolled zero. Yeah, that's not right. Your character sheet's got a, a bug in it here. I'm just going to roll uh, with the regular dice. Yeah, I'll see if I can fix that. Four damage, not much better, but hey. <laughs> Is that with the plus three? Uh, plus five damage, because math. <laughs> oh, yes, it's not actually written in, that's why. Uh, plus strength, there we go. There, that should work now. For some reason, I had plus two instead of plus three, because it didn't register the third click. Okay, sorry, I had to scroll away for a moment. And it is, uh, we, 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 so f five points of damage then. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, Oxia looks down at this this affront that, uh, actually, sorry, she doesn't have legs. <laughs> she has a snake body. Um, but you kind of uh, tap on to, which, have you ever seen her before? Nope. You never actually saw her, yeah. So standing above you, this snake-like creature um, with the, the, the two hands outstretched. Uh, she she uh, reels back as you uh, pummel into the hide of her lower uh, lower tail uh, and uh, hisses a bit at you uh, and then looks uh, closely scrutinizing you. Her full attention is now on you. Good, good. So we'll see how that goes. Actually, just a sec. Uh, wait, wait, wait. I, I still have my spiritual weapon hasn't gone yet. Oh, yep. 
It's going to attack. Team attack. Yeah. It's going to attack that lobster dude. Okay. Uh, the spiritual weapon does not get the uh, the uh, advantage that was given by Annie because it's not a sentient creature. Yeah, no worries. Oh! <laughs> Nat 20. 20. Oh, wow. It, it, yeah, okay. That More definitely... Than... That, oh, wow. That's, that's like extremes of emotion right there. Yeah. <laughs> so that's four <laughs> in the end. But it's, yeah. A second piece it's because... Sorry, what was that? Second D8 for the nat 20. Okay. Well, or you just doubled it, but okay. I'm okay with that. Oh. Uh, so that would be five, six, seven. Uh, as it, it comes down and it looks like it might have been following Annie's guidelines and then kind of whips upward and looks like it's going to hit it right underneath the, 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 the less armored part where its arm is. And then it kind of just sort of scrapes across its back, leaving a little bit of a trail of, of fire, but not doing what you had hoped. Uh, now it is uh, Graveler's turn. Graveler, smash! I mean, he's kind of got that down pat right now. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's a hit. <laughs> so that's a good start. Smash again. Jeez. <laughs> Grappler, jeez, MVP. <laughs> I, did, I, did I write that wrong? That seems like it's really doing well. Uh, nope, he just rolls really well. Okay. Yeah, that's that's awesome. <laughs> yep. Oh, there's, there's a bad one. Uh, third one, unfortunately. Third one, unfortunately, does miss. Uh, as it's kind of like pummel, 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 and then crunch. Chomp. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah. What? I the just first one is a pretty massive hit, so. I only meant to write that, to uh, click that once, but. That's okay. The, the, the... the touchpad seems to be failing. <laughs> <laughs> as, uh, as Graveler kind of leans in and uh, uses one hand to kind of uh, uh, hold on to the creature, the other two hands kind of like uh, lower, lower uppercuts kind of bam, 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 into the chest. You can see the, well, you can't see, but everyone else there can see the, the, the chitin sort of cracking and giving way underneath. And then he kind of leans in with his head and chomps right down on its chest, pulling back and kind of uh, removing some of the chitin and some of the, the, the viscera starts to pour outward. The creature's looking terrible, but still standing somehow. Uh, does the uh, does uh, uh, Graveler move at all? Not yet. Fair enough. Uh, now it's time for the guards, and they seem to be quite invigorated by the <laughs> their new ally. They're really hoping he's still an ally after this is all over. As far as they know, they're <laughs> fighting on the same side, which is good. Uh, and we'll stab inward. Uh, that, unfortunately, does not... Uh, it, it's, it's thrashing wildly, and as it does, the uh, spears are having a hard time finding their mark. Uh, second one does, though. Again, the guards are doing pretty good. Uh, as the second one kind of stabs inward and just finds a, a point to where you can snake the spear in and kind of hit that vital spot. Meanwhile, guy's still going to be defending himself. It's the only thing that's really worked for him so far. The other one's still going to be trying to do some damage to this creature. Uh, and he's kind of calling over, and you can hear them behind you, Silas, as uh, uh, <laughs> the uh, the female guard is kind of like, would you just hit him already? I'm doing fine, thanks. I'm doing just... And she proceeds to hit him already and misses, unfortunately. No. Now for the big creatures. Um, this one is upset, and this little this little rocky creature has angered it numerous times. So once more... <laughs> It's going to try to crush him. Oh, no. Wow. It's rolled so badly on that so far. Uh, and the second strike. Second oh. strike does. So 11 bludgeoning damage to Grappler or to a Graveler. And yeah, he grabs onto it, actually. It kind of holds him there. He's almost holding him tight and pulling him in with the, 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 the uh, tentacles, which. Uh, 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 kind of cover over that that weak spot he had before, um, which is a convenient way of saying there's no actual advantage there, but it's looking pretty bad. Uh, meanwhile, uh, once more, yeah, once more, the one that's getting attacked uh, is the one who's not being not defending herself. 
Um, let's see if that works. Uh, that does hit. So she's now looking hurt. And she's shouting over, just hit him already, as the tentacles kind of wrap around her when she tries to stab him with a spear and pull her in close. Uh, and then... Oh, and then she's going to... Uh, does it matter to him, but it matters to her. Ah, she's still scrumming. So he'll proceed to try to pummel her with the pincers now. No. And that is a hit, and that is the end for her. As her friend screams out, no, no, and she unfortunately is crushed in the grasp of the tentacles. And is no more. She might be fine. You know. What was that? That's what happens when you get impatient. <laughs> wow, cold bunch. All right, cold room. Got that. Got it. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. Everything's fine. Uh, let's see. Um, she's not like ripped the nap, though, is she? Like, <laughs> what's that? She'll be fine. She just needs some rest. That's just rest, and she'll be good as new. Good as Annie. You're up. Annie, get your gun. <laughs> Well, you see Medrick uh, climbing up I'm, the side of this giant turtle. Uh, Silas has disappeared. Um, I'm going to continue fighting the, this guy here, or at least trying to. <laughs> uh, another different D20. That is on the floor. <laughs> uh, does a 15 hit? 15, unfortunately, does not. Uh, this time, with all Darn. the flurry of things going on, you kind of bounce it off of uh, Graveler instead by mistake. Oh, no. Is that with advantage? Um, Why would I have advantage? Because there's someone, you have an ally standing next to it. No, uh, that, no that gives me. That gives you a sneak attack, uh, not, not advantage. Yeah. Okay. Sneak attack if I have advantage or if I have an ally. Yep. Um. Well, I got one good hit in at, at, at one point, at least. Um, You'd be giving them yeah, a lot I'll... of help to hit, so. Exactly, uh, and I will continue to, to try to guide people where to hit. Basic, basically, I'm hoping that my arrow is, like, it flinging away my arrow or whatever is, like, going to make an opening. Okay, yep. Yep, this time, this time uh, it kind of swivels and it bounces off of uh, Graveler. The dying on the floor is a nat 20, and now I'm sad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Uh, never throw away your floor dice. All right. Uh, and you're staying where you're at? Okay. Uh, Oxia now sees this creature at her feet. Doesn't recognize him. Doesn't know what this creature is doing other than trying to attack. Doesn't feel happy about it. Doesn't want to be interrupted. Let's see. What is she going to do? Uh, no, can't do that. Okay. Uh, hmm. That one sounds like fun. Um, she uh, pauses for a moment, her one hand still, still holding and hovering underneath this swirling mass. The other one pauses a moment in its... Uh, actually, no, it can't. Okay. She's just going to move backwards, <laughs> and I will I will delete this uh, box for simplicity's sake. Yeah, please. <laughs> um, well, just remember that like the uh, docks area between can, the two can other can docks. Make a, a box without the fill. I can do that. Yeah, that's the other option. Let me just quickly do that, and I'll just make it a thin line to show. There's a break basically right there. Uh, yeah, she backs up to the middle of the uh, of the creature. Very sure-footed on, on, on the back of this thing. Uh, you will get an attack of opportunity, though. Oh, yeah. Uh, again, a disadvantage, though, because you are kind of hanging off the side of a giant turtle. So. Do I use my strength bonus to, like, yeah. You can just click the weapon, but yeah. Right. Uh, I'm, that is a fail. 
Well, that's a fail, so the O is not really it's necessary. Really Actually, roll the second one. Let's see if you roll a natural one. No. Well, there's two natural ones, but they're together, so that's no <laughs> All right. You manage to hold on to the side of the thing and take your flailing uh, uh, swing, but she steps back, uh, trying to keep concentration in what she's doing. Uh, that's her... Uh, actually, sorry. Uh, as she stepped back, she didn't do that, so she can continue... Uh, the beams are starting to strengthen now, and she seems to be aiming them almost. They carve a line first on the on the beach. Uh, they they kind of dip down a bit, carve a line on the beach, then through the uh, seawall, then then up above the seawall, striking a few of the buildings. And you can see where the where where it strikes, uh, smoke is rising, as it seems to be setting things on fire. Uh, Medric and Silas, actually all three of you. Uh, let's call this. A, let's just call this a perception check. Nine. Okay. Um, yeah, Silas and Medric, you're not sure which direction this is going in. Uh, sorry, Medric will be more sure. Uh, but Silas and Annie, you see the beam kind of going off, and you're not really sure what's intended by that. Uh, Medric, you look over and... You're not sure exactly where she's aiming at because you can't really see. You're not all the way up on the back of this thing. It, you don't have quite the perception you need. But it is in the general direction of the Temple of Ignis. I'll just scream at her, you bitch! <laughs> wow, everybody seems to hate Ignis. <laughs> uh, Silas. I mean, her cult, my cult. <laughs> it's like it's a not a happy thing. Okay, well, you said the orb thing is uh, okay, are the beams coming from the orb? Yes. Okay, and it's floating above her hand? Yes, ensconced and, in this, uh, this shadowy thing. And I am successfully hidden by her, or hidden from her. She doesn't seem to notice you, possibly also because you just got swung at. Mm. Uh, Silas is going to uh, use all of his movement to move up uh, behind her. Uh, bonus action to enchant his staff, and then he's going to try and slap the, like, knock the, the sunstone away from her. Okay. That was he's going to try to knock it flying. Sure. Let's see. Okay, make an attack. I see how this works out. That's a 15 if I've got advantage. Um, you are hidden, so, yep, you kind of creep up carefully uh, and then uh, empower the staff and then, okay, that was not expected. Um, it collides with something semi-solid. Uh, it feels as though when you hit the edge of the shadow around this, this thing, uh, as though you are suddenly almost swinging through water, and it slows down, takes a lot of your momentum out, and then suddenly there is a crack as your, uh, your staff moves through that, and then collides with the solid center inside. Uh, first of all, roll damage. Uh, it's 10. 10 bludgeoning. Wow, okay. Magical well, bludgeoning. empowered, yeah, okay. Yep. Uh, let's do that. So, where is my thing? Oh, right. Uh, as you collide with the, the, the thing surrounding it, first of all, uh, and then roll a dexterity saving throw. Because what's in the middle does not move. When you kind of hit with all full strength. 11. Yeah. The, the, uh, the striking of it, the reverberation of, of hitting an immovable object, essentially, uh, knocks the staff out of your hands. And it goes clattering off the back of the, the tortoise. Okie dokie. Uh, that's all my actions. That's so. that's it. Okay. Uh, this guy, this guy, this poor lone sea devil who's been trying his hardest to go, to eat this guy, and he refused to be eaten. Uh, he's just going to claw. He's not even going to bite. He's going to eat the dead flesh instead. Um, a six does not hit. Still a disadvantage because the guy's been fully defensive this entire time, and. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, out of desperation, maybe even more so because his friend beside him who had been attacking has just been torn to shreds. 
He's whipping this spear back and forth and holding them here. Uh, maybe, if he survives all of this, he'll be known as the one who stopped the attack, weirdly enough. Medric, you see flying on by you uh, what looks like Silas's staff as it kind of clatters to the, to the ground uh, just below you. And one up will actually draw a little thing. We're going to need to buy that guard a drink. Or a resurrection. <laughs> or, or a funeral, I, yeah. Uh, Medric. So if I take the turtles back as difficult terrain, can I make it up next to Oxia? Once you're up there, it's no... Uh, actually, sorry, it is difficult terrain for you up there, yes. Uh, but yes, you, right. can, you can easily make your way up there as you kind of claw, climb your way up, up over the edge. Uh, you see that now uh, uh, Silas is standing behind her and she's looking back with a bit of surprise on her face at recognizing Silas. Uh, and then kind of keeping the two of you in in, uh, in view. Okay, just let me check my journal real quick. So for the shield, can I spend a charge and attack at the same time with it as a bonus action? Uh, it takes a bonus action to activate it. Okay. So I will swing the hammer in Oxia's face for action number one. For attack number one. You only have one action. Yeah. Oops. Okay. okay. She, uh, she kind of, uh, her whole body shifts in that way that a snake might uh, in an unnatural way, but easily kind of avoiding your, your strike. And then the shield lights on fire, like... <sighs> And the, light, the light of Ignis shines before both of you. Maybe even a little bit more brilliant in the presence of the Starstone. All right, that is Medric's turn. Now, how much damage do I take when I light the shield up? Or does it only happen when I attack? Only when you attack. Uh, okay. other, otherwise, the fire is basically contained. And the spiritual weapon will attack. Oh, yeah, we should probably put that on the... Teenage Mutant Ninja Lobster there. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, it does not find purchase and goes skittering across its armored back. All right. Can I... No, actually... Can I move it still, or, or is no. that a bonus action? Moving it is okay. a bonus action. Gotcha. Well, move and attack is a bonus action. What? Like every time you use... Just my bonus action to light up the shield. Okay, then the then it couldn't attack even. Oh, is it a bonus action to attack? Oh. Right. Well, it is. well, he can take a bonus action to move it up to 20 feet and attack. Try to talk louder to give a hint that people should stop talking so loud. <laughs> so Graveler is going to swing for the faces once. Uh, Graveler oh. actually gets advantage, but that's... Uh, oh, that's a 16. That hits, actually, with the advantage. Nice. Then he will hit again. Pow. That's a hit. So, uh, with that second strike, because effectively this is a P under PC control, tell me how this happens. What does it look like when Graveler takes down this creature? So the first strike goes huh, in the face and holds it, and the second strike like just holds down arrow and presses low punch and just poof right in the face. <laughs> and its brains explode over and over the docks and into the sea. For such a, a hard looking creature, its insides are remarkably liquid as and it splatters. <laughs> uh, and the, the the two guards that are there are like, oh, Jeez, and they have to scrape themselves down from all the icker that's now been. And then there. Grappler will take his movement and go next to the turtle. Stomp Does it over. still have any attacks left? No. A claw and a bite. <laughs> nice. Um, can you break up a multi attack of movement? Sure, whatever. <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> it's going to be on the turtle's 
eat, I guess. Or is the turtle even attackable? Sure. All right, well, let's attack the turtle. It's going to go ne next to one of the turtle's back legs. I mean, and Theoretically, everything is attackable. Ouch. Uh, that, however, does not, uh, pierce its, its tough hide. And it's going to bite the turtle's shin. Uh, it finds some purchase. A, a little stone, a little pebble tooth breaks off as it bites in. Uh, and the turtle now is a combatant. Is what? Oh, it was content to be there until it was attacked. Okay. Uh, now I will roll initiative for it. Oh, shit. <laughs> Yes. Oof. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I meant to. Glad to know it has no deck, though. All right. Uh, and uh, it won't go for a while. <laughs> uh, even though it rolled well, it's kind of the weird way the initiative works. Uh, let's see. That was. That was. Uh, Graveler. I figure that'll like destabilize the light beam that Ox is trying to control. Uh, this guard, this guard just has to hold on. Uh, he is going to crawl out. Could use a little help over here, and go full defensive once again. Uh, that guy's dead, but the other one uh, grimly steps forward and <laughs> is going to try to grapple at him. Well, pincer him really. Uh, that misses. <laughs> His full defense has been incredibly useful. It's really kind of annoying. Uh, and that misses as well. Holy crap. I have to give him a name now. Even if it's only on his tombstone. Uh, Annie, you're up. The creature has just been smashed by, uh, by uh, uh, Graveler. And then Graveler stomps over to the turtle, which seems to annoy the turtle. You're muted. Uh, I'm going to move to here, I think. No. Um, here. How close can I make it? Um, one more. And I am going to shoot at Oxia. All right. She would prefer you didn't, but doesn't really have much of a say. That is, uh, that is a 14, 19 to hit. 19 hits. Cool, cool. Um, uh, new dice. Uh, okay, that's a six. Seven. Uh, 13, 14, 15, 16. Wow. Okay. Two, six, one. <laughs> nice. Uh, as an arrow flies. <laughs> like alternate, like ones and sixes. So I had to check which one was which. As the arrow cuts through the, uh, the, the rain, just sort of carving its way through. And we follow it with that, that close up camera angle, that special effect as it goes flying through and uh, hits Oxia uh, right in the forearm that she had extended, which was manipulating this creature. And she uh, screams out a, a, a horrifying scream and looks around at, at, uh, uh, from where it came and where she's at and seems concerned. Um, with that, let's see. How about what can she and I'm, I'm trying to distract her to give advantage to others. Uh, and I am going to move. Can I share a space? Or actually, no. I'm going to go to here. And you, yeah. could, you could technically share a space with a, a, a spiritual weapon as long as it's not opposed to you. <laughs> cool. Yeah. I thought I only had two spirits. But I, I had three. So. All right. Let's see if. Hmm. Okay. Oh, what does she want to do? 
Uh, now she's got choices to make. Uh, let's see. I think she's going to simply... Hmm, do we call that simple? Sure. Um, she pulls back her hand, the one that was manipulating things, and screams out in pain and rage. Steps back a little bit, just to the edge. Not outside of anybody's range, there's no attack provoking. Um, but then, uh, with that, that arm still with the arrow stuck through it, uh, points her fingers and mutters something as black beams of crackling energy uh, fly at uh, Silas, Medrick, and Annie. Can't see uh, Graveler. So, uh, and what kind of save is that going to be? <laughs> uh, it's actually an attack roll. Oh, okay. Just got to remember what the heck her attack bonus is. Okay. Uh, so against Silas, 12 does not hit, I don't think. Nope. Against Medric, 21. Oh, man, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's embarrassing. Uh, and against Annie. So yeah. only two points uh, to hit. And, wow, not the wrong one anyway. Uh, there we go. Against Annie. Does an 18 hit? Yes, yes, it does. Nice. Well, there's the damage I was looking for. So black beams of energy ripple outward. Uh, um... She'd be at disadvantage against Medric because she's using a ranged spell attack in melee. Oh. Hmm. All right. Technically, that's true. Uh, I will roll again then. Uh, although I think, well, one of them's definitely not going to hit anyway. If I recall, let's just back up a bit here. Well, it would just be the one against him. Okay. Uh, that was better anyway, so it still hit. Yeah. Uh, it's only two um, points, which is embarrassing. Yeah. But there's, 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 there's 16. Hmm? There's uh, that, that might not hit him. 16's the better of the two rolls, and the other one hit. Wait, what? Uh, no, the, other the 21 was going to hit him. Oh, yeah, okay. Sorry. Does the 16 hit Medric? No. Well, then the two points that was kind of pitiful anyway, and I don't know yeah. why you brought this up, but it doesn't hit you anyway. <laughs> um, it's. It, it, Hey, we already got two hit points. On one hit point. <laughs> As uh, instead, uh, Annie takes the full brunt of uh, of what was it, seventeen? Seventeen points. Uh, as the Aim it. as the uh, it hits you f squarely in the center, almost lifting you off your feet for a second. Um, and now, ow, ow, ow. Doo -doo, because she's no longer concentrating on that, it can engage. Doo -doo, where is he? Oh, where did he go? Do, do, do. There it is. As the creature she was using to manage everything, Milo actually engages now uh, because it's no longer being used for its original task. Uh, let's see. That is her. I think she has any fancy bonuses. So I think she is done. Silas, you're up. She seems to be uh, desperate now, trying to lash out at whatever's around her. So where? Uh, okay. So the big globby thing that was above her hand is still above her hand? It's still standing there. One hand is still extended underneath it, but the other hand that was manipulating it is now being used to fire these bolts off. Okay. Um, then, uh, yeah, uh, Silas is going to cast quadruplication, and there's now four of him. Okay. Uh, as he uses one of his spells slots um and he's going to tell her or he's going to say in abyssal uh mother hydra needs you not she has changed the uh plan and that's all i got because shillelagh only works on a wooden club or staff specifically 
Oh, right, because I got knocked away. Yep. All right. Uh, well, that's intimidating. Let's see if the sea devil can finally eat this guy. That's all I want is just this one guy to be eaten, and it has not happened. Uh, let's see. Uh, he will lead in with the bite this time. <laughs> this guy refuses to be eaten. Will he be clawed to death? Oh, Very finally. possibly. Finally. As the guy is <laughs> clawed into the side. So guess how many hit points he had left. It took six points Is it over six? He had seven. <laughs> so he stands still. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. This guy is definitely on epic level now. Medric. This guy is going to be revived and is going to be getting a drink from me. <laughs> he should get a promotion or a pay raise. Uh, yeah. Medric, you see now as uh, she has turned her attention to you and while uh, wildly firing out these bolts, one of them seemed to go way off and you hear Annie's uh, uh, surprised and pained voice as it connects. You also see the, the strange globular shadowy thing that was con it was controlling or creating the beam which is no longer as, as certain as it was is itself starting to form little t little pseudopods uh, looks like it is engaging you also feel as the creature beneath you starts to uh, shuffle on its feet uh, looks like it's preparing to move okay uh can i does it look like oxy is controlling the shadow creature Make an Arcana check. Oh no, that's intelligence. I can't help that part. Yeah. No. Nah, who knows? No idea. Magic. It's like this whole other thing. Yeah. You're not even sure how you do it. Ignis does it through me, of course. Right, right. You're not doing it. That makes it easier. I actually, I won't move if I'm already if, if I'm already next to Oxia. Um, Warhammer, swing, Oxia, face. Ha! Wow. Ooh. A solid strike to the side of the head. Natural 20. Yeah. yeah. Uh, nice, nice. Do I just roll a second time for uh, just... It's, uh, it's already calculated there. Okay. Right, 4 plus 5. Yeah, there's a D6 crit labeled. Yeah. yeah. Uh, nasty. Wait, what? If you look at the just yeah, below where it rolled, the four plus five, the five is the critical. Yeah, you can actually hover over it to see how it calculated that, but yeah. Yeah, the Warhammer should be a D8, though. It's a D8? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't see that in the uh, thing. I will fix that. Uh, for now, we'll add one um, to each of those. Yeah. Uh, if it's supposed to be a D8 for, for the critical, shouldn't it? Is, is that like an item specific thing? Yeah, oh, it's a D8 for each. Warhammers are a D8 weapon. Okay, because it's been rolling D6s the entire time. Yeah, he hasn't really connected with much for now. Yeah. <laughs> so I think everything he had connected with is dead. Um, so okay. to make it simple, I'm just going to add two onto the damage for yeah. now. It's fixed. And it's then... fixed in your sheet now, by the way. Okay. And then. And then let me find the thing. Too many windows. <laughs> ah. Welcome to my world. And then shield. Poof. Just don't burn me. <laughs> I might send Oxia like tumbling your way if I, if, yeah. But maybe not. So that's just a straight up d20 because it's based on dexterity. Boo hiss. Uh, that's a miss. Oh. Well, at least I take no damage. <laughs> it's true. All right. And then spiritual weapon will come over. Where is it? No. Uh, it won't quite make it the whole distance, uh, just because it has to go no. up as well. So it's about okay. there. You could attack the turtle. You could attack the turtle. Yes. Yeah, I'll attack the turtle. It won't let me select it. Won't let you select what? The spiritual weapon? The spiritual weapon. Oh, I'll fix that. Are you set on the measuring thing? No, I yeah. didn't have him as the controller. There you go. You should be able to move it now. It does 17 damage, though. 
or a 17 to hit. I was going to say, how did we even know but hit? Uh, that is a hit. No, no, sorry, wrong dice, wrong dice. Ignore that. It does not do a d20 in damage. <laughs> <laughs> it does seven damage. Ooh, that's pretty good. All right. As it comes over and the, and beside your other friend starts hammering away at this thing's cre this creature's legs, it seems to be unhappy with this. It's been about six rounds so far, right? Uh, I haven't been keeping track myself. That's something that you're going to have to do because I can't keep that. Um, there may be a six way to sounds around. Right, so. it sounds about right, though. Yeah. Okay, that's your. Uh, actually, wait. You activated the shield? No, you attacked with the shield, so the spiritual weapon has to stay back. Okay. Crap. Wah. Because uh, it's either the spiritual weapon or the shield at this point. Okay. Shield it is. All right. The big guy. What is he going to do? Well, first of all, he's going to start to move. Uh, let's see. So, Medric and Silas makes dexterity saving throws as the ground is moving beneath you. Fuck sakes. Do, does Oxia have to make one? Hey. Oxia does not have to make one. As she appears perfectly stable. Uh, as does Silas. That's uh, a pretty impressive ability to to find those crevices in the, in the hard exterior shell of this and jam a toe into it. Uh, Medric, you are knocked prone and... Make another dexterity saving throw as you start to slide off the side of the turtle. Dexterity is dumb. <laughs> you slide off and land on the ground. Oof. You take six points of bludgeoning damage. You land badly. Uh, as uh, Pretty much head first. As... Uh, let's see if I can do this this way. There. The creature begins to move. Uh, gets there. Uh, oh, does not leave Oxy behind. That was my mistake. Um, the uh, Guardian gets a chance to make an opportunity attack as it, as it sort of pushes right by, right by him. He can't stop it. It's too strong for that, but... Although he's pretty strong too, but... He can make an opportunity slam. Bite! Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, he kind of takes a snap out as, it, as its uh, big uh, limb goes by and kind of snaps loudly without actually connecting to anything. Uh, that's its turn, and now it is Graveler's turn. At this point, too, I should say, because it's moved out of alignment and so much is going going on, little spikes of uh, radiant energy essentially are bursting out of the uh, of the contained uh, sunstone, and seem to be uh, cutting through the the surrounding creature as well. Uh, no longer coherent and no longer uh, seemingly to come together. Graveler rocks over and and. Can you climb up 10 feet? He's already used 10 feet to walk over. Uh, he wouldn't be able to climb up 10 feet, but he might be able to climb up um, 5 because he's got... It's difficult terrain to climb. Plus, he'll have yeah. to try to grab on. I will give him advantage to try to do an, an athletics check just because he has three arms. Is he close enough to reach the sunstone? No. No, it's, it's, yeah. it's standing above uh, Oxia, which is also itself probably about 20 feet up at this point. All right, well, it will try to climb. So is that a dexterity or wait? It's a Actually. Athletics, he will have advantage. So he's got 10 dexterity, so, and three strength. So I'll just roll it with a dice roller. Sure. You can just click on the word strength if he doesn't have the skill. There's one. 
And yeah, that 17 looks nice. All right. He managed to, gra to grapple on. He's holding on at five feet, being dragged by the creature now. Can hey. he hit from here? Can he what? Does his fists connect with anything from there? No, he's still five feet from the very base of the top of this thing. He could punch the turtle. You can attack the turtle. Yeah, I'll attack the turtle. Okay. Silas is, a ha is he happy that he's not quite alone up here. He's uh, had to hold on with at least one hand, so he can use the other two hands, so two attacks. He will have disadvantage. Right. That hits, though. Ah, oh, that would have been nice. And the second one misses. And then he bites. Uh, nope. And misses. He's only going to get the two claw attacks. He misses anyway, but... Okay. All right. The guard. Everybody's leaving him behind. What is he going to do? He survived this long, but it's looking really bad. His best option is to stay there and defend. I mean, he can. he might be able to get away, but... That'd be two attack, uh, two attacks against him. No, he, well, he could defend. He could disengage. defend and move. Yeah, okay. He can't defend and move, but he could. He can disengage. Well, I guess he could technically defend and move. Uh, let's see, or disengage, or keep his post. I'm going to have him roll his wisdom. Sure, that's no bonus. How fuck am I? <laughs> oh crap! All right, he's not very wise. He's staying where he's at. Yeah. <laughs> he's defending himself. Uh, let's see if the creature then crushes him for his his effort. Unfortunately, it was one step too far, as the creature lurches forward and punts him off the deck. He lands in the water, uh, unmoving. No. So that one is no more. Uh, Annie. The creature is passing right beside you, seemingly annoyed enough to leave, but not really paying much attention to you or anything else around it. Up on um, top, you can so just barely make out the... Oxy is still there, and the blob thing is still there? Yep, you can just barely make out the blob, though, because the curvature and the size of, of the creature right beside you kind of blocks everything else. Cool. Can I reach, reach Oxia? You can't with, see her. Uh, about... I can't see her? No, being that close to the creature. Mm -hmm. Well, I will use my bonus action to disengage. And go here. Can I see her now? Oh, yes. Cool, cool. Shoot her in the face. <laughs> oh, well, that's a 17 on the die, so 22. 22 Ooh. is a hit for certain. Uh, I'm standing next to her. Uh, you are. So you get your sneak attack. As she's trying to understand how you managed to hold on. Seven. Silas is standing there with his arms crossed and his toes have gone through his boots and dug into the shell. <laughs> uh, 13 damage. Okay. Nice. Uh, the arrow comes slicing through the air and it kind Three. of... 14? Okay. That makes all the difference. Not really, but uh, it's pretty close. Uh, as the arrow kind of slices through the sky and you see it up close, uh, 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 Silas, as the arrow cuts through one side of her cheek and pierces out through the back of her head uh, and she howls in pain uh, as the as the side of her face is opened up from this arrow shot. Um, she is looking terrible. Uh, anything else, Annie? Um, well, that's my action and my bonus action and my move, so... Oh, I forgot. Seems about the, right. I forgot for the other two guards to, to go. Both of them would kind of go up and try to whack at this giant turtle. Seems to be the thing to do. Uh, it'd be funny. No, I, don't go save your drowning friend. <laughs> well, yeah. It's, well, one of they the might not even see him. Though. Uh, so yeah, one of them actually uh, uh, managed to shove his spear uh, kind of right between the toes of this creature, and you can see it kind of visibly flinch from the uh, from the the pain. It winces. 
Uh, that's Annie. Milo. Milo is going to... Hmm. That's an interesting question. What is Milo going to do? The shadowy bulk reduces in size as half of it pours down into Oxia's hand and starts to wrap itself and weave itself around her. And within a few seconds, a shadowy shield has formed around her. It seems to be protecting her. Uh, Oxia. What are you going to do, dear? What are you going to do? Hmm. She's not concentrating anymore, so she will look towards uh, Silas, and you can kind of see the whole body move, and a little bit opens up just in the in the stuff around her, as her eyes are revealed and stared directly at Silas, and she speaks in uh, in the same tongue you spoke to her, not the tongue she's used all the time, but the one that she knows you know. Um, the one that sounds like uh, the evil speech that Gandalf was saying. Exactly, exactly. Um, you have chosen your side, and you have betrayed me. We will not forget this. And she casts at you a spell. Make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, goody, goody. And I have advantage on that. You, That's a 22. Do because... Because I have magic resistance. Oh, excellent. As you feel the stare kind of pour over you, and for a second, a brief second, you feel your limbs starting to tighten up, and then you're able to shake off the effect. Uh, she'll not be pleased about that. Uh, let's see, what else is she going to do? Uh, that's it for that. Silas, you're up. Okay. Well, so the globby thing has split into two things? Yes, and there's only a thin shield now around the, the, the star stone. Uh, it seems to be uh, ebbing and flowing around it, trying to cover it, but unsuccessful. And the energy of the star stone itself is peeking out every once in a while. You try not to glare or look at it directly because the glare of it seems very strong. And if you felt if it was full in the face, that would hurt a lot. Well, this might hurt a lot. Um, <laughs> he hasn't used this spell since the first time he uh, he used it and flat out killed someone. So he's going to mind spike the uh, the globby creature. Milo. <laughs> okay. That's uh, an interesting question. Um. Yeah. Okay. So it is a DC thirteen wisdom save. Hmm. Okay. Um, what are you targeting? The one that's surrounding uh, Oxia, or the uh, one surrounding the Sun Starstone? Uh, the one around the Starstone. Okay. It's nothing special there. Nope, only got a 12. Yay! All so right. it takes 14 psychic damage. And that's concentration duration, so the fire would go away. Uh, for the next hour, I n always know where it is. Okay. okay. All right. As you find your, your, your mental way of hooking into uh, its being. And there is a bit of weird psychic backlash. Um, it is as though you're standing on the precipice of something. A vast void uh, which you, can, you feel like you're always falling into. It gives you a slight bit of vertigo and causes you to stumble a little bit. Not off the back of the creature yet, but uh, still gives you a little bit of a, of a weird feeling. And that feeling you think is going to linger so long as you're connected with this thing. It's okay. I'm a warlock. I'm always standing on the precipice. <laughs> it's fair. It's fair. Uh, that is your turn. Um, 
Yeah, I think so. Um, can't really move anywhere. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay. Um, let's see. That one remaining sea devil doesn't have anything to eat anymore. So content on doing so, it starts to move towards Medric. That's all it's really going to do. Medric, you have a sea devil bearing down on you, but also this thing is walking away. Yeah. And it's got the star stone, which is unacceptable. You can now feel it stronger, pulsing. Uh, even, even kind of, it, it kind of distracts you a little bit. Every time it pulses, you can kind of feel the energy. Um, familiar energy. God damn it. How do I... Q thing isn't working. You have to pick up your token before you press Q. So then you just tap it and let go. And if you accidentally hit tab, the Q thing won't work at all and you have to start over. Okay. So it's 20 feet here. How high up can I get on the turtle? Uh, well, if you were able to um, climb it, then you, uh, it's basically 10 feet for every five, it's 10 feet up to the top. So if you have 10 feet of movement left, you'd get halfway up. Same place that uh, uh, Graveler is right now, basically. All right. That's not where Graveler is, but we'll just move you down here. I just here's the open space. Oh, okay, you can move, Milo. Yeah, Milo's kind of mm -hmm. virtual at this point anyway. So. Yeah. All right. So. That's my movement. Now make a acrobatics or athletics check if you're trying to climb it. Oh yeah, definitely trying to climb it. Fox Unfortunately, takes. you can't find any any purchase on it. And you don't have enough movement to make it up higher, so you're basically at the at the foot of it. It's all in so motion, I, and it's too it's too uh, too slippery to really grab onto. At the foot of the shell, or yep. Feet okay. Still on the dock. Well, you see, on the dock, or like five foot above the dock. No, nope, your feet are on the dock. You didn't manage to climb up. So, what's next? So next is Channel Divinity, because there's a lot of hostile creatures around us right now. Okay. And what are you doing with your Channel of Divinity? Holding up the symbol of Ignis, chanting some words of power, and boom! There's light all over the place! Is that going to kill the guard that's next to you? What? Is that going to kill the guard that's next to you? No, it's only hostile creatures. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> so any magical darkness within 30 feet of me is dispelled, and each hostile creature t has to make a con save. It, it takes radiant damage or fire, 2d6 plus cleric level. Okay. Okay. So that will be... I, the turtle now is considered hostile. Uh, mm -hmm. Does that go th through things or is that a light because you're right up close to the turtle so it would block um, oxia from being hit from this although my it still be hit. yeah it's a burst of light so it would be blocked by the turtle um, from okay. hitting oxia it still will hit milo and it will still hit the turtle uh what's the range on that 30 feet it will also hit the sea devil <laughs> okay cool so what kind of save was it again? Constitution? Uh, yep. 
Okay. Let's see for Milo. Milo gets a 21. Uh, let's see. Where is my turtle? Turtle gets a 21. So is it half damage if you save? or? Yep. Okay. So four points. And Milo takes... Thing takes four points. Okay. Uh, there is a bright, brilliant flash of a sort of reddish gold uh, light that bursts out from Medric, sweeping over. You can see that um, it's only the Milo which is guarding the stone, um, but as the energy reaches towards the stone, the stone itself gives off a similar echo of the same light. Uh, and in fact, uh, it is an echo. Where is the save? Let's save again, and saves again. So there is a an amount of energy that's that's given out uh, to reflect that. Uh, but yes, it seems to like almost like a call and echo, like it pinged when you uh, when you sent out that energy, uh, and you can see the 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 shadowy globule around it. Apparently, not actual shadow because it did not get dissipated, uh, but does seem to get shredded somewhat. For it, first from the initial hit and then from the rebound. Good. And the spiritual weapon can make it up to Oxia, right? Uh, it can make it there, yes. Do you have to be able to see your target? I forget. Probably. I don't think right. it says. I mean, technically it's it's you making an attack. It's just you're attacking through the spiritual weapon. So we've usually done it before that you can move it to places, but if you can't see the target, yeah, you can't. Yeah, uh, it's not a sentient creature of its own. No. So you're aware from the shift in the light that it's up there? I'll say make an attack at disadvantage. It's basically swinging wildly at this point. Or can I just attack Milo instead? Sorry? Or can I just attack Milo instead? Uh, you can, yep, you can see that. So it floats up towards the one that's that's surrounding uh, the uh, stone and attacks it. Uh, that is a hit. Ha! Eat max damage, Milo. <laughs> uh, and you see the the uh, the spiritual weapon with satisfaction kind of swing and spur and spin around, catching large chunks of this thing. Uh, and uh, revealing about three quarters of the stone. There's only a small bit of this now, and you can also see that as it spins around the stone itself, it does give off uh, or does dissipate. However, the bright brilliance is exposed up there. Uh, Silas and uh, the um, uh, 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 the Zorn, the Rocky Guardian, uh, as well as Milo. Oxia and the turtle all have to make uh, constitution saving throws. Oh, my worst save. Yeah, the guardian is like only a hey. the turtle shell and can't see Oxia. Does, does he, is uh, it still in range? Actually, I will say it can make it with advantage as it can kind of tuck. Actually, no, if you can't see from there, neither can he. So, uh, yep, he's fine. Uh, the turtle is not. <laughs> uh, Silas appears to be okay. Uh, Yay. Oh, I Yay. forgot to roll for the Sea Devil as well, because it was uh, saving against the initial effect. And it saves, so it doesn't take... I will be right back. I just got to use the washroom real quick. Okay, we're almost, uh, I think, done. I said it's probably... Does Oxy have to make a save? Okay, I'll wait then, but hopefully we're done within like two rounds or so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Oxy does have to make the save as well. Um, but she's okay. So, actually, the only one really affected by this is the turtle. Which is... Sucks to be a turtle today. Does it eject everybody from its back? Uh, <laughs> like a horse would? Well, we'll see here. Um, that's nasty. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it Milo will... What's that? Did Milo make a save for that? or is uh, that... Milo made the first save there, I think. Uh... Oh, actually, no, I do have to make it save for Milo still. Too many NPCs. There he is. Mm, I know the pain. And Milo hey, made as it. well. Yep. So, yeah, only the turtle is really affected by this uh, as this searing pain goes across its back. 
Uh, it does uh, 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 writhe in pain. So now a dexterity saving throw from Silas uh, from uh, uh, the Zorn, actually from the two guards and from uh, 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 Medric. Because Oxia? It's, it's turning in place. Oxia does not have to make this. Um, yeah, I got 10. Okay. Let's see the two guards. Yeah, 14. The guardian got 12. Okay. That's not what I wanted. Woo! One guard's fine. The other guard is not. So, uh, Silas, you are pitched from the side and knocked over to the edge. Make uh, another dexterity saving throw to avoid falling over. Uh, the uh, nope, you're nope. over. So we'll do first of all the damage from failing it. Uh, it's not much, <laughs> really not much. Uh, one point of bludgeoning to uh, Silas, uh, this guard, and to um, your rocky friend, and then an additional d6 for Silas. Wow, you made it pretty lucky there. You are still prone as you fall over. Yeah, and second at the second con save, he loses the connection to Milo. Ah, as you feel it go dark. Um, that was Medric's turn. That was a lot. It All was. Right. That was a lot. Okay. Uh, as the creature now will move out to the sea, with. Uh, Ox is still on on the on its back. Do, 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 and it is hustling. Uh, wait, what is this move? How fast does my how fast does my turtle go? Ah. Okay, well, first part, get to there. Then it's in the water. Do uh, we get an opportunity attack against it? You certainly do, as does uh, your friend. Uh, actually, the spiritual weapon does not move. It's not attached to anything. Uh, can it be like, does it have to be against the turtle itself or anything that, that we can now see on the turtle? Only against the turtle. Okay. Well, the weapon is kind of on it. Otherwise, if you're traveling on a ship or something, it would keep sliding the back, to it's, the back. It's actually floating above, uh, quite a bit above it, though. It's floating above with the uh, with the uh, uh, thing. We won't work for physics. It's not yeah. attached to anything and it can't move on its own. Uh, <laughs> however, uh, just about everybody gets to make an opportunity attack. Except for Silas, who's currently flat on his butt. And, oh, uh, I still get to. I just do it at disadvantage. All right. All right. So I got a four. You missed. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Medric, you missed as well. It just bounced off of its hide. Uh, the Zorn... Uh, the Zorn. Oh, actually, the Zorn was attached to it. It doesn't get an opportunity attack because it's going with it. Okay. <laughs> it's actually halfway up on the side, so uh, it will make an athletics check though to see if it can hold on. Where is this? It doesn't list athletics. Just yeah. roll dex. Just click on the word dex. Well, athletics, athletics. would be strength. Oh, or, strength. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, you can click on strength. Yeah. Wow, uh, can we use the dexterity one instead? <laughs> <laughs> Either way, he ends up falling off. Uh, so we'll leave him back there. Uh, and see, guard. Guard one. Guard two. I'll tell you, the guards have been doing pretty well. Uh, it takes a swing at it as it, as it uh, wanders out of, uh, into the water. Uh, and then quickly is lost in sight. However, let's see if Oxia can hold on to this thing. Uh, basically, yeah, basically that's it. Okay. Hey. As she is moving through, um, you can see now the last of the shadowy creature that was surrounding the Starstone is essentially evaporated. The strength of the Starstone starts to come back. Um, Oxia uh, kind of cr uh, uh, cringes and kind of hover or rolls herself into a ball covered by the, the remains of what I've called Milo, but you don't know what it is, the, the, the goopy stuff. The Starstone 
falls, no longer held by her power, and drops into the water. The uh, turtle and all of that moves very quickly deep into the water and is soon out of sight. But somewhere in here, the star stone sings underwater. And because we run a little bit late, because we run a little bit late, we will pick that up next time. Okay. Thank you very much for playing, folks. And thank you for putting up with uh, any of our problems with uh, sudden computer issues. Uh, however, um, yeah, we've been building up to this fight for a little while, and uh, I think that this fight went pretty well for you guys. I mean, only a few guards get eaten badly, and then one survived for a long, long time uh, until he also was kind of destroyed. But it's What about the sea devil that's still on the dock? <laughs> Well, we'll pick up with him next week, but you can probably imagine that he is not going to stay there because they're generally cowards. Uh, I, I would like to voice my intent to go save the guard that was the the holding on there. Okay. That that would yeah. be my next thing to do. He's, I'm yeah, voicing this now. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Uh, I haven't crossed him off, so technically he might be able to save him. Uh, we shall see. It's, it's not been around yet. It's not it's, been around yet. It's true. It's true. <laughs> Uh, he's only drowning. He's not dead yet. Uh, I want to thank my players for joining me this week, uh, and I hope you guys had fun in this uh, long-anticipated battle. Part one, as you might imagine, there are other things happening around the city that will be resolved by the time we talk again next time. Now, that is not next week. Uh, next week, I'm going to be running a game at Enbicon, uh, which is a our local gaming convention, now gone virtual. Uh, because of that, I need all my brain power to concentrate on getting that game done. Maybe I should have taken this week off instead because I'm technically running the game on Friday, but I'm going to be so burned out by the time that's over that I'm not going to have any time or any mental energy to prepare for this game. So it'll be two weeks before we play again. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's lots of other episodes, plus an entire campaign that we had to put on hold. So you can catch up with that and then be on the on tinterhooks by the time we return back. Is that the word, tinterhooks? It is now. I've just made it up. <laughs> Uh, thanks again guys for playing and uh, you can go to YouTube to watch all those previous episodes YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash ENCAF1 you can also find us on Twitch if you're watching this on YouTube twitch.tv slash ENCAF1 uh, we generally are running now on Sundays at 2.30 uh, that's our live spot uh, provided we don't have all the glitches uh, you can also find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash L-O-T-D-I. That's Legends of the Drowned Isles, L-O-T-D-I. Or you can just look for Legends of the Drowned Isles, and you'll find like three things, but really that's the important one. That's where we will chat. Uh, let's see. Thanks to uh, thanks to everybody. I don't have a sign-up. I never did figure that out. Thanks to the universe for existing, because it's a great place to keep my stuff. Thanks to the <laughs> internet, because it's a great way... What's I was going to say, if you're interested in anything about MBCon next weekend, it's Friday and Saturday. Uh, I believe it's like $2 or something like that. It's it's $2 US, I believe, was the minimum that the website would let, let us um, charge uh, to get full access to any of the games. Uh, and you can register. All the information is on NBCon's Facebook page. So E-N-B-I-C-O-N. You can also go to tabletop.events and look for NBCon 2020. And it'll take you right there to all the events, uh, including the crazy one that I'm running. So there. Thank you very much, folks. And uh, that's it for this week. Have a great week. We'll talk to you again in two. And maybe by then I'll also get that World Anvil updated and find an easier way to get linked to it. Oh, there's so many things. Have a good day, folks. Good day. Yeah.